Hey, what I got behind me here is a Z22SE engine. These are made by General Motors. This one's had some sort of a catastrophic failure. I believe it's probably a timing chain, which has probably resulted in bent valves, but uh, we won't be entirely sure until we pull it all down. So hang about and uh, watch the disassembly. Now I had no intention of making this video as uh, still shot time-lapse, but um, look, that's what I had the camera set to, so that's what I've recorded. Look, I've just started here by removing the heat shield off the exhaust manifold, and now we're removing the exhaust manifold and gasket itself. Usually at this point, I always try and have a little look in the ports there, see what, um, see if I can see any damage. Now I rotated the engine around onto the intake side. First thing that came off was the throttle body. You could see how, um, dirty that was on the underside of that. Next thing here was a bit of wiring needed to come out of the way. I'm not too um, not too keen on keeping the wiring for this particular engine. It was just the mechanical side of the engine that I wanted to keep and see whether it was worth saving. So that's the reason I'm disassembling it today. This is just now removing the intake manifold. There's a bit of wiring in the way here so um, took a little bit of toing and froming just to get it all out. Moving now on to the rocker cover. So there was just a number of bolts that um, had to be removed first before we could actually access the bolts to the rocker cover. So the wiring harness sits in a wiring harness runner up there. And uh, once that's out of the way, there's a whole lot more space to get access to the rocker cover. Next, I took off the fuel injection rail. Um, again, a couple of bolts and all the fuel injectors come out. Off with the coils and now it came off with the rocker cover. With the rocker cover off, I was hoping to have a bit of a look under there and see if I could see any damage. At that point, I could see that there was a number of rocker arms themselves that were damaged. So, continuing along here, pulling off the harmonic balancer, pulling off the tensioner for the serpentine belt, and pulling off the engine mount itself as well. Now, there's a cover here that covers the timing chain and the balance shaft timing chains. Once this is off here, I was expecting to actually see a broken chain here, but um, the chain was still complete, but there was a few broken guides and pieces of plastic that had fallen through. Here's off to the actual timing chain tensioner, which was most likely the issue with this particular engine. Now with the rocker cover off, we can remove the camshafts. I'm just removing the bearing caps here now, and then getting the camshafts themselves out. Not too worried about getting things out in the correct order because at this stage I wasn't sure if I was actually going to keep this engine or not. Here it is just removing the cam gear. These are on incredibly tight so you may need a breaker bar. And there's the intake and the exhaust cam. And here I am trying to pick up all the pieces of what was left of the rocker arms. Just now removing the cylinder head bolts here. I couldn't find my breaker bar so I've just done the old trick of a piece of pipe in the over the end of the uh, socket and here I am just continuing to take out the head bolts. With the head bolts out we'll be able to pull the head off and have a bit of a look at to what actually damage we've got. Now quick glance there we can see that all those valves are actually still sitting open so pretty well every single one of those valves has been bent. Just winding the engine over. The engine still winds over quite nicely. Just wanted to clean up the pistons. Just thought I'd actually videotape this part of it. And um, the video actually did work out. And just showing you how I clean up the pistons. This is um, WD-40 spray. I find this quite effective at just breaking up the carbon. I just give it a good soaking to begin with. Then I get a um, just a small sort of a cloth just to start wiping up the extra carbon. But you can see here I'm just absolutely flooding it. And even just starting to wipe it off with my hands, you can begin to see the carbons just coming away quite quickly. I usually start with a um, soft brush and just give it a good, good run over and see if I can loosen a lot of that carbon. You can see here as I'm spraying it while we're going that a lot of that carbon is just coming away. What I'm really looking for is if the pistons have actually been severely damaged when they've come up and hit the valves. Next I'm just using like a green scotch Bright pad here and just starting to give it a good rub and looking to see if there's any of that damage. Obviously this needs to be done to each piston but just wanted to show you in real time how quickly it is um, to clean up these pistons and make sure that um, they're in good enough condition to reuse. You can see here it just takes a, takes a few minutes 
and I use heaps of this WD-40 and it can, if you look at that already it's nearly done. There's a few tough spots there that just didn't want to come clean. Just some burnt carbon. Um, it's just a matter of working hard. I've sped things up a little bit here because it just got a little bit tedious but I wanted to get that last bit of carbon cleaned off the top of the piston. Obviously I need to do this to all of the pistons and I'm looking for any particular damage from where the pistons hit the valves. Now with it all cleaned up here, um, it's very easy to inspect and also you want to start to inspect the cylinder bores as well. Here I am just cleaning it up with a rag and I'll see if I can show you a close up here with the camera and see if we can see the marks in the piston that came up and hit the tops of the valves. Um, there are four small little marks on the piston. I'm not too concerned about these but you can see them there. They're just tiny little indents where they hit the valve when the valve was remained open because of the timing chain. Obviously now with it all cleaned up I can start to examine the bore as well. Just want to clean it all out. Make sure that there's no dirt in there getting ready for reassembly um, or for further inspection. It's time now too to have a look at the cylinder head and see what damage that we have there. You can see here that every single one of these valves is still open. At this moment they should all be in the shut position so every single one of those valves is bent and will need to be replaced. Possibly too the valve guides can be cracked and damaged when this happens but we'll have a look at that when we disassemble the head. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see subscribe to my channel. Give me the thumbs up. Leave any comments or questions below.